Hello there, Monochrome here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you guys a piece of software that I use all the time. It's called Kmonad and it's a keyboard remapping software. It's written in Haskell, that's the Monad in the name. It works on Linux, Mac OS and Windows with binaries for Linux and Windows in the GitHub, GitHub releases tab. The Mac OS version does not have any binary, you'll have to compile that from source. And it's command line. A thing to notice is that Kmonad isn't compiling on macOS Ventura. It's throwing a lot of errors, so your mileage may vary. It did work before on macOS Big Sur and older generations. Okay, so the people who may or may not know what a remapping software is, it's basically a piece of software which lets the user change the keys on the keyboard to whatever they want. It's, it's in the name. But the nice thing is that remapping softwares generally allow the user to do a lot more than just rearranging the keys. As you can see in the features tab, there are a lot of features that you can see. Some of them include being able to just remap keys, obviously, and being able to set a key to do dual purpose, that is, when you tap a key, it does something, and when you hold down the key, it does completely another thing. You can also set so that double to, uh, double tapping a key will also do something else instead of printing the, the, the printing the tapped key twice. You can also set something called layers, uh, which is very important. Layers basically allow the user to completely change the whole setup on the on the keyboard. Like for example. Uh, our keyboard has a key called shift, right? If you press and hold shift key, the letters, uh, instead of becoming small letters, you know, those become big capital letters and the top numbers change changes into special characters and there are other special characters on the side that you can access. If you release the, release the shift key, now you don't have access to some, some of those special characters. So this is basically a layer. You can create custom layers on Gamemonad, so you can specify what key can be a layer and what things to be, uh, things should be in a layer as well. There are multiple other things as well, <laughs> like you can set a keyboard uh, shortcut in inside a key, so you could press a key and it will do something like Control Alt Delete or something like that. Isn't that a common key on Windows or something? I'm not sure anyways you can also run shell scripts and uh, you can uh, you, you can do a lot more stuff there is also the QMK tap dance feature where you can tap a key but it behaves like it's been hold until another key is pressed like on smartphones when you tap the shift key it activates momentarily uh, and the shift key acts like it's being pressed and hold and then you tap a letter that letter gets capitalized and then shift key gets released similar uh, kind of feature i'm sure there are more of them you can just look at the configuration file uh, here that has all the details that you need so let's get to installation it's quite simple if you are on arch linux uh, all you have to do is basically run a hyphen s kmonad hyphen bin so let me just search and you can see that there is an aur for it super simple uh, the binary is also available for a couple of other more distributions like the pack it's available as a binary package inside arch in gnu geeks and void linux then there is some stuff for nixos as well which you have to configure yourself uh, in GNU Geeks, you have to like copy some lines, like you have to do whatever that is. Uh, so always just read this wiki, like this wiki, it's very useful. Although there are more in uh, ways to install it, we can just compile it using the Haskell stack package. You can install it on Windows. Just like I mentioned, in macOS, there is a couple of options like Kext and Dext. Uh, Kext will not work on newer version of macOS. Dext is used on newer version of macOS, but the Dext version is not compiling at the moment, so I'm not sure what to do. And if you don't uh, use Arch Linux, GNU Geeks or Void, 
you, you don't have to worry as I mentioned before it's actually available as a binary go to releases here and click on assets and you should have these two files here the Linux version is for Linux almost all distributions it, it should run <coughs> this one is for Windows if you use Windows and you want to configure that using Windows download this thing and run it that's it now that's out of the way let's see how to configure it let's open up a terminal uh, I think the font can be slightly more bigger So this is my configuration file. I'm going to read through this configuration file and show you what exactly everything is. That should give you some sort of an idea on what you can do with Kmonad and its you know capabilities. But I still recommend you to just read the configuration tutorial here, yeah? which is basically a file that's inside the repository. This guy, this guide has almost everything that you need to know. It's quite long, but it's defined very correctly. So I would say you should read this. Also, to make your life easier, I would suggest you to just download this whole repository. Just download the zip or just git clone, depending upon what you're comfortable with. It's basically the same almost. I'm not going to compile it, but I still would download this because couple of folders here like key map this is where the tutorial is and inside there is another thing called template which has a template for a couple of generic keywords including two thinkpad ones as well and down here there is a folder called startup this is used for starting the system uh, starting kmonad on you know boot like this is a system d service this is an open rc service file and this is a run it startup service thingy so I would recommend you rec recommend you to just download this guy. Uh, the Kmonad config can be split into four sections. Like there is dev config, this guy, and then there is dev alias, dev source, and then dev layer. In dev config, that's where all the operating system uh, specific stuff goes. There is input output fall through and allow command and there is i think uh, one or two more stuff like the compose key i don't really use the compose key nor do i know what it does so i removed that from the config but check the tutorial it's there anyway here in input since i'm using linux this text uh you know here it says device file and u input sync but if you are on mac os it's going to be a different thing on windows it's going to be a different thing but it's also there in the uh, in the tutorial so you don't have to worry about that in linux it's device file and you input sync uh, here what you have to do is you have to specify the path to your keyboard file since in linux everything is a file uh, your keyboard is also a file and almost all the keyboards are present I think all the keyboards are present in a folder called dev slash input. This has all the devices that you're connected to, you know, the input and output, you know, all of that, like mice, uh, keyboard and other shit. So what you want to do is there is going to be two folders. There is going to be by path. And if you have an external keyboard connected, there is going to be a by ID as well. Right now, I don't have anything external connected to it. So that's why there is no folder. But if you want to remap your dedicated you know, regular external keyboard it will show up here just will just near to by path uh, in a folder called by id since i'm going to remap my internal keyboard i'm going to use by path so i'm going to just go into by path and you can see a lot of keys here in which there is this guy called event kbd that is going to be our internal laptop keyboard if it has kbd it's a keyboard so it's simple as that so all you have to do is copy this whole um 
name and give it here so slash dev slash input slash by path slash platform yara 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 hyphen kbd and then in output you just give it a name this could be anything doesn't matter just give it a name and fall through is an important feature so in kmonad we have a thing, uh, thing called dev source okay uh, i haven't explained this yet but here's a quick thing in dev source you add all the keys that you want to edit like in a remapping software you first give the remapping software all the keys that you want to remap right so fall through is basically uh, by default if fall through is turned off uh, by default kmonad will not recognize any keys that are not in the dev source file as you can see in dev source i only have the letters and alt keys and stuff like that uh, every other key in the keyboard is not here so if i want to use all of those keys i will have to have all of those in the dev source which is annoying because i don't want to remap everything i only want to remap a small section of uh, my keyboard not the whole keyboard so what i what i did is i turned on fall through so every key that is not inside dev source instead of not working at all it just behaves like it used to so you, you can see that there is no control or windows key right but i can still use the keys because if i if i tap the control key or the windows key it behaves as if there was no remapping software so that's basically fall through there's a better definition in the tutorial by the way allow command is basically the feature that lets kmonad run shell scripts i don't need it so turned it off that's it and here in def aliases we create aliases inside this uh, function or section I, I don't know what to call it i'm not a programmer i think you can call this a function anyway it doesn't matter uh the whole thing is uh, that all these fancy things that you can do on kmonad it's done using like a big command and uh, you have to shove that command in this layers okay so as you can see this is very easily readable here there are you know all these things which are not letters these are extra features that i have that are that i have added and if uh, if i were to use this long as thing below it's not going to be readable uh, your keyboard is going to be extremely hard to edit so for that we just use def alias to shrink everything down so uh, the syntax to create an uh, alias is super simple it's kind of similar to how you do it in bash here is the name of the alias or the short form that you want to create it's space and then inside a bracket you give it the you know the thing you want to shrink right now i want to shrink layer toggle func one that whole sentence i want to shrink it to fn1 so that's what i that's what i have done here same goes to here similarly on the bottom one i have created an alias alias called lmt and it shrinks all of this down to lmt if that's easy enough to understand um now you might be confused what these layer toggle or tap holder and everything is i'll tell you what these are there are more than uh, more than these two uh, available for you in kmonad so i i would still suggest you to read the tutorial.kbd i think i have said the same thing at least five or six times i kid you not it's very important anyways layer toggle func one is that layer toggle just toggles to another layer so if this function one is called you know this key is called then it toggles to another layer until you remove it so if uh, for me the left alt key is my fn1 key so if i have if i press and hold the alt key now the layer changes from the base layer to the func1 uh, layer that's it it's super simple if you release the key it goes back to your base layer here uh, this is not for layers this is for the multi key feature that i mentioned before where you can tap a key and it does something and tapping and holding a key does completely different stuff yeah this is basically that <clears throat> uh, there are like four options to choose tap next tap hold tap hold next and tap hold next release uh, of which you can choose whatever that is comfortable for you 
the author of Kmon had recommended that tap hold next release is the best of option for most people so that's why i used this used this instead of the other three options but you can play with it if you want to here the three arguments is the time um, in milliseconds for a um, hold to register as a key and then the two keys you know for the tapping and holding so in this command it is that when i tap this key you know if uh, i have a key that is named as lmt i tap that lmt key it becomes a so if i tap the lmt key a is the output and if i hold the lmt lmt key it becomes the left meta key or the left super key or the left windows key that's basically it and 250 milliseconds is for it's kind of complicated to explain tap hold next release but if i press and hold a key let's say the key that's going to give me a i press and hold that and i hit another key then it becomes super plus that key like for example uh, this key lmet is actually in the position of a as you can see a lmet so it's in the same position so if i tap the key a on my keyboard it prints out a but if i hold the key a and wait 250 milliseconds then the operating system sees that the left uh, super key is being pressed and hold but if i press and hold a and then tap something uh, very quickly like that uh, wasn't 250 milliseconds of delay but still this uh, a became uh, the left meta key it's kind of confusing to understand but if i don't click anything else and i just want uh, the operating system to know that there is a super key pressed then it takes 250 milliseconds but if you are tapping another key in succession then you don't really need to worry about the delay it's instantaneous that's basically it and here the next section is depth source <coughs> depth source i mentioned before it's basically all the keys that you want to remap uh, here i want to remap uh, all the letters and then the alt key and the space key so i just have that if you want to remap a lot more keys you have to have the whole keyboard here i can show you since i have told you to download the whole thing right the whole repository because there are some templates that, that you want here let's uh, open the thinkpad let's open the t1 as you can see here they will create like a layer that you can copy and a regular as dev source that you can copy similarly if i want to just remap a regular iso keyboard iso hun here you go you got yourself a full fledged desktop keyboard uh, with all the number keys and stuff this is because you know this font is too big let me just uh, reduce the font as you can see it's the whole keyboard with the number key and everything so that's basically it you can just copy from this uh, templates i don't really need to remap all the keys so this is what i have then is the def layer thing def layer is where you create layers first of all we will create a base layer and it the first layer the first layer that comes after def source will be the base layer base layer is the layer that uh, how how do i call it if you run kmon ad and you don't press any layer key and you st start typing base layer is the one that is getting activated right now okay so uh, as my base layer i have call mac mode dh this is just a name that i have given it you, you could give any name it doesn't matter since i use call mac mode dh instead of qwerty i replaced all the qwerty letters for call mac and here instead of arst and any io i have a home row mode set up that was this thing and then uh, the left and right alt keys that i specified here 
the left and right alt key becomes the two layer keys that I want to shift and then there is a space key. Here is another layer. Here the name is Funk1. Remember when we created the alias for Funk1 and I have given that here. So when I press the Fn1 key which is the left alt key this layer pops up and it just, it just has numbers and stuff like that. Numbers and some special characters. Uh, if you the keen eyed among you <laughs> English is quite hard sometimes uh, so sorry if I sound you know gibberish I think it uh, I think I need a lot more time to practice English anyway as you can see there is a backslash here uh, this key is supposed to you know the third key here if I tap it uh, the bracket key comes up but since we use brackets here in the programming language itself or the configuration language itself we will need to use something called an escape sequence to escape the letters so that the program knows that we are trying to specify the bracket as the key and not like starting a function or something like that so use something called uh, escape sequences here you ta you add a backslash before the key so that the program knows that you are trying to set the uh, param parenthesis here so the things that need escape sequencing is the parenthesis you know both the uh, both the brackets you'll need uh, to escape the escape sequence itself so if we want to use backslash the key then you have to use it twice and underscore here it also requires uh, escaping because underscore is used as a null key in a in a layer so if you want to specify a key to use the underscore as the print printout statement you know you'll need to escape it here is an example where I have used underscore uh, to say that there is no key here. For example, if I press and, uh, press and hold the func2 key on my keyboard that I have set up, all my key becomes you know, left, right, up and down, then volume, mute, brightness down and brightness up and stuff like that. But these keys, I don't really have a key that I want to put in here. So I just want to keep it blank. In case I want to edit and add a key in other time, you know, another time. At the moment, I don't really have any keys that are going to be populated here. So to set the key as null key, you know, that there is no, you know, just to set, uh, to tell Kmona that there is no keys there and it's just a blank key, you use underscore here. And uh, another thing to mention is that the dev source you have to copy this whole thing and create the layers because this um, has to be exactly the same as the layer if you have like less keys here and then more keys here then KMR cannot understand so you will have to have all these keys exactly in the same order here and then you can remap the letters to anything you want that's why we use the null key in places where I don't want keys so that the size will be will be the same okay we have edited the configuration file now you have to run the configuration file which is very simple uh, only thing all the only thing you have to do is run sudo kmonad kmonad and the config which is in for me uh, i have my config set in config.kmonad.config.kbd uh, just if I hit enter kmonad will run this is useful for running the configuration file while you're editing it so you know you can uh, troubleshoot errors and stuff like that but uh, once you have re once you have created the configuration file you will need to have it permanently run in the background right for that remember when I said uh, you have to download this whole thing yeah go to that folder where you downloaded this repository go to the folder named startup and there should be three files here take the systemd file if you use systemd if you use openrc or run it then you can use these things i am expecting that 99 percent of you guys are using systemd because that's the uh, that's the one that everyone uses every distro has systemd by default almost every distro so we're going to open this file 
in your text editor or something and change this line so exact start this is the location of kmonad program and this is the location of the configuration file so right let me just open up a terminal and let's go to that folder where it this thing is set up in my system which i think is in user lib system d system yep so here uh in my system it's user bin came on ad because that's where came on ad is installed on my system and then this location is where my configuration is once you have edited that you can just save that and move the configuration file to this folder user lib systemd system this is where all your systemd service files are uh you know those files exist in this folder so cop sudo mv or like cp if you want to came on at uh yada yada dot service to slash user lib system d system okay once that is done you can do sudo system ctl daemon reload day what is daemon yeah daemon reload so the systemd daemon can reload uh, only then will you see kmonad because you just edited this file folder so the systemd does not actively look at the folder all the time uh, it kind of does it when it started and if you add something to this folder systemd needs to be needs to restart the daemon to you know see that new folder a uh, new file that you just added so you run that command and then you just simply run uh, system ctl restart like enable hyphen hyphen now uh, kmonad kmonad uh, and you hit enter and then kmonad should run now and it will start up in boot as well that's quite simple i think that's pretty much it there's nothing else that i have to show you end of video